Just a thought today about Holy Mother Church and the need of praying the rosary and Our Lady's protection. You know, when God, our Lord Jesus Christ, came, he founded a church, established a church to which all men were supposed to belong. It was the only means to salvation. You and I know that. The popes have taught it in the past until, of course, Vatican II changed this whole doctrine, that outside the church, there is no salvation. It is only in the Catholic Church, which our Lord has founded, and in which he has given us all that we need, all of the things that we need that produce grace in our souls, that give us the strength to make it, just to survive in this veil of tears. But as soon as that church was established, Satan and all of hell was unleashed. They wasted no time in trying to destroy Holy Mother Church. All because of souls. God only seeks souls to take them to heaven, to give the beatific vision. But the demons, they seek those same souls, as you very well know, not because they love us, but because... They are jealous of us. They were supposed to see God, and they lost it because they couldn't bend their knee before the human nature of the Messiah. They lost their throne in heaven, and now you and I are supposed to fill the thrones in heaven that they lost. They can't bear to see a man take the throne that they lost. They are so prideful. And so they waste no time in trying to destroy that one institution that alone can save souls. It started with the Pharisees and the Jews and the attacks on the church. Think of Saul before he became St. Paul. The attacks that he waged against the first Christians. And then it was all of Rome attacking the church and making just about every Catholic to be a martyr. And then there was the Arian heretics who took just about every one of our churches, our church buildings, and our seminaries, and seminaries weren't exactly invented back then. That was around the time of St. Charles Borromeo. But in any case, all of our institutions taken, similar to today. And then you had the Albigensian heresy, that threatened to destroy the whole church as well. And then the Protestant revolt. How many souls in Europe have lost the faith because of that one man, Martin Luther? In reality, though, it's the demons doing the work. But then skip ahead from there, a a thousand years or so, to the 1900s, 400 years, I'm sorry. And um, then you see Vatican II. Of course, there's not much that needs to be said here. It changed everything from the sacraments. As I heard someone say today, never before in the history of the church has a heretic ever touched the sacraments. Changed them. And they did it because they're in means of grace. You take away the means of grace, you you cause the damnation of souls. They changed our Mass. They changed the Holy Eucharist. They even, to, to uh, ensure that the Mass would be taken out of the world in the Holy Eucharist, they changed the words for the consecration of bishops. If you don't have a valid bishop, you can't ordain a valid priest. If you don't have a valid priest, there is no Holy Eucharist. There is no absolution of sins. There is nothing. Vatican II has done this. And to see all that's going on in that church today, don't ever be so embarrassed about saying that you're Catholic. I know that today, with all the scandal going on, don't ever be embarrassed. I know there's a little bit of that inside where you're kind of like, yeah, I'm Catholic. Because you know they associate us with that false church. But don't ever be ashamed because what is going on in that church is their problem. It's not the Catholic Church that did all of that. It is Vatican II. 
and you belong you do not belong to the Vatican II Church. You belong to the Church which has remained loyal to all of Christ's teachings, all of his disciplines. You have all the means of grace at your disposal. It has not been destroyed. Then we have the confusion too, furthermore, with all of the traditional groups in the SSPX, further division. And St. Stanislaus over there, as long as there's a Latin Mass around, it doesn't matter, as long as that's there. So there's all this confusion. But all of it, we must always remember, doesn't start with a man. The man is just the instrument. It is the demons, the Satan himself, behind this destruction. Because think of all the harm of Vatican II. Think of all of it. How many souls there are that are now part of that church or have given up the faith entirely because of that institution. You do not convince that many people. A single man cannot convince that many people. Only what is diabolic can convince so many people that those changes were wrong. It is a truly diabolic fight against what our Lord has established. And that's what everything in our culture is about today. It's a fight to destroy the church and to destroy a soul. It's what everything boils down to. And everything that you do in your life ultimately leads to the same thing, whether or not you save your own soul or not. And whether or not by your example you save a soul or not. What is the remedy to all of this? It is the rosary. They say, it's said in the, the liturgy on the Feast of Our, Mat, of our Ladies uh, on October 7th. They refer this, I believe it's the offertory verse or communion verse. They say of Our Lady, Thou alone, O Lady, hast conquered all heresies. The rosary was given to us to defeat heresy. And it was given to St. Dominic to overcome the Albigensian heresy. And it continues to do so even to this day. Pick up your rosary and remember to pray against the enemies of the church, against the heresies that are out there for the conversion of all those who are duped into thinking that that church is Catholic. So when you want, when you pick up your rosary tonight and we hold a banner that says, pray the rosary for peace, we're not just simply asking for a worldly peace without wars, but you'll have a, a supernatural and a spiritual peace if you convert the heretics, have them join the church. What this world would be like when heretics convert, and when the Jews accept the true Messiah and the true faith, what peace will have then. But it all starts with the Holy Rosary. Don't ever despise your rosary. Say it. It's important. You might not see, but there are demons all around. There are angels all around. And by a single Hail Mary, you, you might win the kingdom of our, our Lord and Our Lady. You don't see it. But when, you, when we die and go to heaven, we'll see what one of our rosaries has done to help the church, to help a soul, to bring peace back into this world. So don't despise ever your rosary, but carry it as your weapon. It's what the popes have always called it. It is your spiritual weapon against the attacks of hell. And it is one of the greatest means also of gaining eternal glory in heaven. I finish with this saying this, what Our Lady revealed in the 15 promises. Those who are true children of my rosary will merit a high degree of glory in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.